everyone. My name is Lisa Ross, though you may know me better as Paper Daisy Creations. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make these little birds. These are created by working some slipped stitches and then cabling um, either to the left or to the right, depending on which stitch you're working. Now, I really love this cable pattern in particular because it's easier than a traditional cable pattern in that you're slipping stitches ahead of time. And so the stitches that you're moving, um, they don't pull on the stitches that are right next door to them. Um, and so it makes it really easy to cable those stitches without a cable needle. So even if you've tried using, um, tried working cables without a cable needle in the past, this is a really great opportunity to try it. Now I am using larger needles and larger yarn so that you can see better what I'm doing. And obviously this is not written in pattern um, for what you are doing, uh, but I did wanna show you how these stitches are worked. So when you come to the first stitch that you're slipping, you're going to slip with the yarn held in back and that's going to create a little float across the back or the wrong side of your knitting. And we're slipping two stitches, the next two stitches. So I'm going to slip one. Um, you always slip the stitches purlwise unless the pattern indicates otherwise. Keep that yarn held to the back and slip the second stitch purlwise. Then I'm going to work over to the next place where I need to slip my stitches. Now, if you've worked multiple sets of these little birds, you'll see that those stitches will start to stack up um, or line up. And so the slipped stitches, if I would draw a line with my finger down below, you're going to see that it, the um, first stitch I slip is going to be right above where we cabled this one to the right. So you can see this will be the first slip stitch and that second slip stitch right here, that lines up right above where we cabled to the left and that one branched out. So I'm going to slip these two stitches. Again, purlwise, yarn held in back. Now, when we come to the wrong side, I'm going to slip the stitches with the yarn held towards the front of my knitting because I want them to go along the back of the work. And you can see down here, these little floats across the back of the knitting from where I slipped them before. And now I hold the yarn to the front of my knitting and I slip that stitch with the yarn held in front or to the wrong side and held it in front to the wrong side of the fabric. Um, I'm going to work over to the next set of slip stitches. And once again, I will hold my working yarn in the front of my knitting, which is the wrong side, since I am knitting the wrong side. And I can slip both of those stitches off, carry that yarn across. Now, once I've slipped those two stitches and I'm working the next stitch, I have to make sure that I don't pull this yarn too tightly. If I would make that stitch super snug, it would really tighten up that float right there and it would change the tension of the fabric. So anytime that you're slipping stitches, make sure that you hold the yarn loosely um, as you work the next stitch, just to keep it loosely um, across the back of your knitting. Okay, I'm ready to begin the fun. I'm going to be working my right cross cable and it is a one slash two right cross cable, which means that the cable is going to cross to the right. It's going to be one stitch that crosses over two stitches. And so what I want is for this third stitch on the needle, that single stitch, to go in front of these two stitches. What I want is for this third stitch right here to cross over in front of the other two stitches, the first two stitches on the needle. And there are a couple ways to do this. I'm going to show you first how it's worked with, with a cable needle, and then I'll show you how it's worked without a cable needle. Now cable needles can come in all shapes and sizes. If you don't have a cable needle, feel free to substitute a double pointed needle. Um, what we want to do is just put those stitches on hold and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two stitches, slip them purlwise off the needle, and then I'm going to hold those two stitches to the back of my knitting. 
Um, and I did go ahead and move this yarn um, to the front since I knew that I was going to be working this stitch to the right. Um, but if you had it in the back of your knitting, just move it in front of the cable needle. That cable needle with those stitches should be behind everything. Now I'm going to knit one stitch that stretches that uh, single stitch and crosses it to the right. And then I'm going to knit two from the cable needle. And that is my one slash two right cross. You can see this um, crossed cable stitch right there. Now my next stitch, I want to work a left cross. And what it means is that this first stitch on the needle is going to cross over the next two. So I'm gonna be pulling that stitch to the left in front of these two stitches. So if I'm using a cable needle, I slide the first stitch onto a cable needle and take it off. Be sure that this doesn't get twisted around. You need to keep it laying flat in front of your work. And you'll see that with this particular cable, it's going to want to kind of slide out of there, which is why I do find this type of cable easier to work without a cable needle. Now I'm going to work the next two stitches. And I'm going to work that one stitch from my cable needle. So I pull that up, make sure it's not twisted, and knit that stitch. And that is my one slash two left cross. And it makes that stitch um, go across the two stitches um, to the front of the knitting. Now I'm going to show you how easy these little birds are to work without a cable needle. I really love this stitch pattern because even if you are a um, fervent cable needle user, this is a great time to try not using one. And the reason why is that this stitch right here that we're going to be putting in front of these two stitches, it's going to sort of hold its own. We're not tugging on it because the live stitches that we're using right here, these first two stitches, they're not connected to those two stitches that are going to be cabled. So I'm ready to work my one slash two right cross. So here's how I'm going to do it without a cable needle. I'm going to take those first two stitches and put them onto my right needle purlwise and take them off. Then I'm going to take this first stitch, which will be my crossed stitch, and I'm just gonna take it off my needle. I'm gonna let it hang out there, and it's going to be just fine as long as I work the next steps rather quickly and don't just set my knitting down and walk away from it. So I'm going to slip the two stitches that I had previously slipped back to the left needle, and you can see they're not pulling on this little this little one that's hanging out here because that had been a slipped stitch before. Now take the tip of your right needle and just poke it into the center and stretch that loop up back onto the left needle. And there you've crossed the stitches and now we just have to knit them. So I'm going to knit those stitches. One, two, three. And you can see that that worked my right cross quite easily. I crossed the stitch and I've got the two stitches behind it. It looks just as it's supposed to and I'm ready to work the next stitch. Now the one slash two left cross is even easier to work because I'm just going to take that first stitch and pull it off the needle. Uh, again, it's not connected to the next few stitches so I'm just going to go ahead and work them. Um, I don't have to move these at all. I'm just going to knit these next two stitches. And then I take that stitch and put it back on my left needle, stretching it to make that cable cross, knitting it, and that left cross is complete. That's my one slash two left cross. It makes the final wing of that bird and um, completes that set of cables. 
So this little bird's pattern is a lot of fun to work. Um, you'll find it not only in my Wings of Wonder design, but you'll also see this in my Kindred Spirits socks pattern. So if you are a sock knitter and want to give it a go, you can try it out. Um, during that pattern, it's actually worked in the round. And so I do have a separate video set up for that. Thank you so much for joining me. You can find all of my patterns on Ravelry and PaperDaisyCreations.com and I wish you all very happy knitting.